We pass hundreds, if not thousands, of different plants every day, and we barely pay them any attention. We're going to assume it's because we see them every day. We're used to them and so no longer notice the beauty in the plants around us. Well, we'd probably notice all of the plants on this list if we saw them in real life, as they are all very eye-catching and super weird. Join us now as we take you through our list of the world's strangest plants. Number 13. Fiddlehead Fern These are some interesting looking little things, and guess what? They're just the furled fronds of a younger fern plant that is harvested and eaten as a vegetable. They're collected early on in the season so that the frond hasn't had time to open up yet and reach its full height. If they were left on the plant for the entirety of growth, each of the little fiddleheads would unroll and open up into a new frond. They're good for you and are high in things like fiber and iron and are an excellent source of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Fiddlehead ferns are used in cuisine from all over the world and are parts of the diets of many different cultures globally. These little plant bits go well with most things, from other veggies to meats and beyond, and they're pretty darn interesting looking. Number 12. Black Bat Flower This plant is known scientifically as Taka Chantrieri and is a flowering plant that is actually in the yam family. It stands out considering it has black flowers that are shaped almost bat-like and can grow to be a foot across with whiskers that can grow to be 28 inches. The standard height of the black bat flower is between 24 and 36 inches, and this strange plant can be found in tropical regions in Southeast Asia, including southern China, Malaysia, and Thailand. They grow their best in places with high humidity, good air circulation, well-drained soil, and in the shade. These beautiful flowers are just slightly creepy, but it would be awesome to see in real life. Number 11. Seropegia Haygarthi these beauties got their name from a man named Carl Linnaeus, who described the plant in Species Plantarum in 1753. He observed them and thought that they looked like little fountains made of wax. So, the scientific name Seropegia was derived from Keros, which means wax, and Pege, which means fountain. They are called many other things, though, like the parachute flower, lantern flower, bushman's pipe, snake creeper, parasol flower, and a few more. These plants are native to Australia, Southern Asia, and Africa, and are known to typically be a vine species. They're also very unique looking, and we wouldn't mind having a few of these around the office. Number 10. Impatience Piquerti it would be creepy to come across the little flowers you see in this picture at night because it would look like you stumbled upon a strange fairy meetup or a mini person ghost playground. For real though, how impressive is this flower with its totally human-like look? Almost like a little girl dancing in a skirt, as many have pointed out. The flower in this picture is native to eastern Africa, where you'll find them in the rainforest regions where there is a relatively mild endemic climate. They prefer temperatures that fall between 45 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity in the area to be over 40%. This species of impatiens grow to be around a foot tall and a foot wide, with the tiny flower blooms averaging a size of around half an inch in length and are very famous for their small dancing girl appearance. Number 9. Swaddled Baby Orchid This flower is more formally known as Anguloa uniflora and can be found in Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela in the Andes regions. If you look at the plant, you can probably guess why it has the nickname Swaddled Baby Orchid. Because it looks like a little baby swaddled and snug in some blankets as you can see in this picture, but it's not. It's just a flower. They have cream-colored waxy petals that amazingly are cinnamon scented. If you're looking to grow any yourself, it'd be best you have a greenhouse that is chock full of humidity and low light. But if you can adequately mimic the plant's native region, you will have beautiful flowers like the ones in this picture to show for it. Number 8. Snapdragon Seed Pods These are also known as dragon's skull considering, well, what I'm about to tell you. The snapdragon has been a really popular plant for gardens for many years now, and the name comes from the resemblance of the flower to the head of a dragon. When you squeeze the flower laterally, the dragon opens and closes its mouth, and honestly, it's a whole lot of fun. But then the flower dies and dries, and what's left behind is something a little more macabre, as you can see here, what appears to be skulls hanging from a plant. Ancient cultures believed that the snapdragon had supernatural and extraordinary powers, giving protection against witchcraft, curses, and deceit when you planted them in your garden. Women also used to eat them, as another rumor had it that if a woman ingested them, they would restore her beauty and usefulness. Weird. These things are just freaky once they're all dried up and sculled out, as you can see in this picture, and if we saw these faces in the wild, it would be a huge nope from us. Number 7. Moth Orchid 
Phalaenopsis, or Phal, as abbreviated in the horticultural trade, is a genus of orchid that comprises around 60 different species. These guys are some of the most popular orchids in the business as they've been used to develop a bunch of artificial hybrids. They exist in places like Taiwan, China, Southeast Asia, New Guinea, the Indian subcontinent, Queensland, and the Bismarck Archipelago. The species even has an island named after it, as Orchid Island in Taiwan takes its name from, you guessed it, the flower. They are shade plants, and in the wild will be found growing beneath the canopies of lowland forests that are the right combination of humid and hot. The variety that has been created is amazing, and some of these flowers are quite remarkable. Number 6. Darwin's Slipper these itty-bitty strange-looking slipper flowers are evergreen, perennial plants with really shallow root systems and stand only 5 inches tall. They resemble some weird alien-snail-kangaroo hybrid, maybe, as you can see in this picture, and are yellow-orange in color with differing amounts of garnet red to a light chestnut speckling. They are native to South America and are sought after for homes and businesses alike. They can grow both indoors and outdoors, but they prefer more shaded areas and a carefully monitored supply of water as their native landscapes are typically cooler plains regions where sunlight and water aren't extremely abundant. Number 5. Nepenthes Raja Oh man, this is one strange, strange looking plant. Meet the Nepenthes Raja, a carnivorous pitcher plant species. It's wholly endemic to Mount Tembuyukon and its neighbor, Mount Kinabalu in Sabah, Malaysian Borneo. It likes to grow in areas where there is seeping groundwater as the soil there is going to be permanently moist and loose, and it also only grows on serpentine substrates. The plant is a scrambling vine, and while they usually grow along the ground, they will try to climb up any object it comes into contact with that can support it. Their pitchers act as traps for insects and have, from time to time, been found with rats or other small animals inside, making them one of only two Nepenthes species documented to have captured prey of the mammalian kind in the wild. Number 4. Jade Vine also known as the emerald vine, the turquoise jade vine, and scientifically as Strongylodon macrobotrys. It's native to the tropical forests of the Philippines and is a species of woody vine known as Leguminous perennial liana. They have stems that can reach lengths of almost 60 feet and are a member of the bean and pea family. This crazy vine is pollinated by bats and birds but is considered an endangered species due to the destruction of its habitat and the decrease in numbers of its pollinators as their homes are affected and destroyed as well. Their turquoise flowers are claw-shaped and almost look like strange blue bananas from a distance. They are clustered in pendant trusses that can contain more than 75 flowers and can grow as large as 3 feet long. Number 3. Hydnellum Pecky This bizarre-looking plant is a fungus in the family Bancaraceae and is most definitely not edible, although it's not toxic. It's known for its crazy appearance with spores on the surface of tooth-like appendages or vertical spines that hang down from the bottom of the fruit bodies. Typically, they're found in Europe and North America, but more recently, it was found in Iran and Korea. They appear to bleed out as they ooze a fluid that is bright red due to a pigment that is known to possess some anticoagulant properties that are similar to heparin. It's known by many nicknames that describe the appearance of the fungus more accurately than Hydnellum pecky, including bleeding tooth fungus, the devil's tooth, bleeding hydnellum, red juice tooth, and also kind of grossly, strawberries and cream. Sounds like quite the treat, doesn't it? Number 2. Skeleton Flower We've all seen what happens when you wear white clothes and it begins to rain, or you get in a random water wharf. The clothes start to become more and more see-through the wetter they get. Well, that's the same thing that happens to this flower. As raindrops fall upon the petals of the skeleton flower, the ordinarily opaque white flowers take on a crystal clear, icy effect where their white veins stick out and almost appear as bones. Where do you think this thing got its name from? Once the flower dries off, it goes back to its standard white color, just waiting for the next rain to assist it in unleashing its wild side. Skeleton flowers are generally found on the wooded mountainsides in some of the colder areas of Japan, and a related species can be found in the Appalachian Mountains in deciduous forests. Number 1. Stinking Corpse Lily We've probably all seen these before, and given the name, we probably don't know all that much about them. This crazy plant is part of the genus Rafflesia, a parasitic genus, and is famous for being the producer of the largest individual flower on the planet. Why would anyone call it a stinking corpse lily, you may be asking? Well, it's because they have an extremely unpleasant and strong odor, very similar to, you guessed it, 
rotting, decaying flesh. These flowers are endemic to Sumatran rainforests and possibly some in Borneo as well. They grow to have a diameter of around 3 feet, and the largest ever measurement that's been given from a reliable source was 3.4 feet for a plant at Palupa Nature Reserve in Sumatra. The plant weighs up to 24 pounds and grows as a parasite on various vines from the genus Tetrastigma and lack observable stems, leaves, and even roots, making it a huge, stinky pain in the butt. They typically blossom for three days to a week every year, and in that time, their stench attracts enough pollinating insects to keep on perpetuating the species. All of the plants that we just saw are truly strange and some of them actually quite beautiful. Were any of these new to you guys? If this video kept you entertained, give it a like, comment, subscribe, share, and watch out for new videos coming your way every day. Wow.